Okay, welcome everybody. I didn't realize it was 710 when I was getting a taste of bourbon over there. Sorry about that. Welcome to the Big Bourbon Club's Luxro Distillers presentation. Welcome to Christina Rapier and Landon Foster from Luxro. We're really glad to have you. Let them know you're happy to have them here. Our mission at the Big Bourbon Club is to make bourbon more fun for everybody. If you're not having enough fun with it, then you need to hang out with me on my deck drinking bourbon. Bourbon should be fun, and that's what our mission is all about. It's for everybody, whether you're a bourbon beginner or whether you're an aficionado or somewhere in between. We want you to enjoy bourbon, and that's what we do at the Big Bourbon Club. We are not your father's bourbon club, and we're glad you are here. Raise your hand if this is the first time you've been to a Big Bourbon Club event. So we have several, and just for this moment, just for this moment, Bill Reynolds, stand up. Bill Reynolds has become a great friend and a great partner to me. Bill helped us with these reservation table tents, and they just not coincidentally have a QR code on there for you all who have not joined the Bourbon Club. And so take your little phone out, take a picture, and we'd love to have you join. There's, there's three membership levels with Big Bourbon Club. There's a free membership, so if that's all you want to do, you're welcome to do the free. With the free, you get the app. We're getting four to 500 engagements every day on the app. We have 3,920 members across the country in less than a year and a half. So get on the app, make bourbon friends. So raise your hand if you don't live in Louisville. So we have a big contingent of people that drove in several hours. Now, on the Saturdays in the summer, two thirds of the room, the hands will raise. But we have folks from Tennessee, Ohio, Western Kentucky and all over the place. But please join at least the free membership. Use that QR code. We have an out of town membership called Small Batch. It's $75 a year. And we have the $125 top shelf membership. For $125, we do 10 of these events a year where a distillery or a brand will come out and present to the club. We've had Watershed out of Columbus in February. We had Maker's Mark that was here last month. We have Luxro today. We have Peerless in May. We have Marble Distilling out of Carbondale, Colorado, which is Aspen. They'll be here in June, just for us. Uh, we have Angels Envy in August. We have, I don't remember all the rest of them, Horse Soldiers coming. We've got Jim Beam. Old Carter's coming in September. Mark and Sherry, I apologize. So we have a great lineup, and when you're a Top Shelf member, you get all of those events at no cost because you're paid the 125 for the year. In addition to that, we try to do barrel picks with all of our presenters. We don't always get to. Everybody doesn't have a program, but if they do have a barrel pick program, we get one. Just like tonight, we're releasing the Ezra Brooks pick that we did back in November. Um, the Peerless Distilling pick in May is the only one they will do the entire year. It is the double oak rye. They're doing one pick for the entire year, and they did Big Bourbon Club. We're great friends. I know two of you were on the pick. Raise your hand if you were on the pick. I know three of you, four of you. Danielle, you were on the pick. You were on the Peerless pick. Yeah, so we had four or five of us here. It's incredible. It'll blow your mind. Peerless is selling the double oak rye at the distillery for 139 a bottle. We did a barrel pick of it. It's going to be incredible. Marble Distilling in Colorado they did their first barrel pick ever with us. We flew out there. Todd Boffman, you were with me when we went out to Colorado, but there were six of us that went out. We had nine samples. We chose a barrel, and of the nine different bottles that we chose, or, or nine different samples, barrels that we chose from, our group of six people, five of us picked the exact same one out of nine. And the other one, the outlier, was my better half, Suzanne, and she picked it second best. It's incredible. It's different than a lot of the bourbons you'll have around here. It is incredible. So they're gonna, they, they set up a distributor relationship in Kentucky just for this occasion. They'll be here on June the 18th. You've got to come out. If you don't have your tickets, it will sell out, as will the Peerless. So we'd love to see you then. A couple of things coming up. Um, we're very excited that we were able to sponsor last month Fraser Museum's um, 
event with Four Roses with their master distiller and their whole team. We were there as presenters and got to introduce some folks there. It was a blast. We're going to be featured in Bourbon Flight Magazine. If you're not familiar, with, are you all? Do you know about Bourbon Flight? It's part of the Lane Report. Lane Report is out of Lexington. It's been around covering business in Central and and most of Kentucky now for probably over 35 years. Ed Lane started it. Old friend of mine that. God rest his soul, he's no longer here. But they started the bourbon flight. And so we're going to be featured in a couple of weeks in the bourbon flight. And then lastly, April 21st, I know some of you already have tickets. Uh, we're going to be down at Rabbit Hole. And Cave invited us to come down. And Peggy No Stevens, my old grade school buddy. I'm certain she had a crush on me in grade school. But <laughs> yeah, Suzanne's not here. Peggy did not have a crush on me, but we're actually great friends from grade school. We go way back. She is the first ever female master taster, first ever, like literally the first ever in the world. And that was probably 25 years ago that she was named that. But Peggy's going to teach us how to make the perfect mint julep for Derby. So it'll be a great occasion, April 21st. I think there are six, six tickets left for that if you're interested. We'd love to have you join us. So with no further ado... Let's welcome up the guest of the, uh, of the hour, Luxro Distillers, Landon and Christina. Come on up. Well, uh, good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Doing well? Nice. Well, uh, I'm Landon Foster. I'm the visitor center manager at Luxro, and I've got Christina here. She's our retail manager here at the distillery. Um, so it's a, it's a great night, and first I want to say thanks to Steve and the Big Bourbon Club for having us out and the team here at Joe's. So give it up for everybody here. Thank you guys for, for having us. So um, before we get into everything, I just want to kind of gaze the, uh, the audience. How many of you guys have been to Lux Row down in Bardstown? Good show of hands. Love, it. Love to see it. Have you guys all taken tours, just gone to the gift shop? Nice. Did any of us take, take you guys on a tour while you were there? No? All right. Well, m come down and see us again. We'll give you guys a good tour. But we've got some uh, great bourbon for you guys tonight. Um, and for those of you guys that uh, have not been to Luxor, I may not be as familiar with this, I'll give you guys a little backstory about who we are. Um, of course, we're located down in Bardstown, um, about an hour south of here. Uh, we started operations back in 2018. Um, and actually, just yesterday, we celebrated our four-year anniversary of our visitor center being open. Uh, so that was a, a big day for us. Uh, we've come a long way since then. We've got a, a full lineup of products. We're home to Ezra Brooks. Of course, that's what you guys are here for tonight, as well as Rebel, Davis County, David Nicholson, and Blood Oath. Um, our company, Luxco, has got a long history in the beverage spirits industry. Uh, we started back in 1958, so we've been around for about 65 years producing not only bourbons, uh, third party, but we also do a whole lineup of other spirits, vodkas, rice, tequilas, rums, gins, etc. Uh, our home base for our parent company, Luxco, is in St. Louis, Missouri. That's where we do all of our bottling today. And we've been producing third party through area distilleries for the last 40 years. So that's why we're able to have some older juice. Uh, but now all those production contracts are over, and uh, we have our own bourbon now. So as of January of this year, we started dumping our own distillate that was produced four years ago. Um, and I know the team at the Big Bourbon Club selected a fantastic barrel back in November that we're going to try later on. Um, but I want to turn it over to Christina, and she's going to lead our first few tastings. So without further ado, if you want to line them through uh, Davis County. Steve, you ready to go to start tasting? Oh, yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So the first bourbon we're going to be trying today is a limited release by Lux Row, and it's our Davis County Double Barrel. Since I do do all of the purchasing for our visitor center, I learned today that what is out on the market of this bad boy is it. Luxco doesn't have any more, Southern doesn't have any more, and one of you are actually gonna get to win the bottle and some tour tickets tonight, woo woo. But what we're trying right now with our Davis County, the whole Davis County lineup is a blend of both wheat and rye mash bills after they age for about four years. This we partnered with Ducks Unlimited out of St. Louis, Missouri, and we took that four-year blended whiskey of corn, rye, wheat, and malted barley and put it to an additional Missouri white oak barrel that had a deep toast on it to age for about six months. So I assume most of you are probably pretty proficient bourbon drinkers, right? Whether you are or not, just shake your head. 
This is gonna have that oaky, smoky flavor profile. I like to call it a campfire style bourbon. You got that oak and smoke and then some sweet molasses on the end. So y'all, cheers to your first sample. It looks like the ladies are walking around pouring that for you. Feel free to sip on it. Again, it's about four and a half years old and it is 96 in proof. And one of you lucky guys or growls here are gonna have the chance to win it at the end of this. So cheers, y'all. All right, is everybody trying the Davis County Double Oak? What's the biggest, hey, here's a trivia question. What's the biggest city in Davis County? Get, get the marbles out of your mouth and say it again clearly. Owensboro. Straight from Tillersville Road. Owensboro, Davis County. Who is Davis County named for? I have no flipping idea. We have no idea who Davis County was named after either, but uh, I know it's Mr. spelled. Mr. It's, Davis. It's spelled a little different than Jefferson Davis. We actually, uh, this bourbon that you guys are sipping right now traces its roots back to 1874. Um, so uh, we have a whole lineup of Davis County. We've got uh, three other labels. One has a, a blue label. It's the uh, straight Ryan wheat bourbon blend that Christina was just mentioning. We've also got a white label product that has a French oak barrel finish. That's got a nice mellow, silky, buttery finish. And then we've also got a red label that's got a Cabernet Sauvignon finish. So if there are any red wine drinkers out there, that's got a real sweet, fruity finish on it as well. But the one you guys are sipping on tonight is my personal favorite, the limited batch. Um, so you guys enjoy it. Um, feel free to. We're an open book. If you guys have any questions while you're sipping, do not be shy at all. So let's, uh, let's hear from the group. What did you get on the Davis County Double Oak? What, give me some flavor profiles. Pepper. Pepper. We got molasses over here. Good one. Say it, scream it out. Anybody else get anything else? What else you get? Butterscotch. That's not, bad. That's not bad for a rye drinker from Tennessee. What else you get? You know, when we have the fourth taste, they won't shut up. Everybody will scream <laughs> out what they got. It's a, it's a shy group, the Big Bourbon Club. You guys club. are being way too shy tonight. Come what on. else did you get on that? Any molasses? <laughs> Beverly, what'd you say? They're, I think they're miming. I don't know what they said. Molasses. molasses. We got molasses That's at what this I table. That's I heard what I something got. over at this table. I don't know what that one was. Pomegranate. That's a new one. Can you spell pomegranate? This is a bourbon tasting, Steve. This is not the spelling bee. <laughs> it's early. If you can't get it now, he'll never get it all night long. Hilda, what'd you get on that? Hey, everybody, everybody, everybody whisper across the table from your neighbors. It's hard to hear. What did you get, Hilda? Vanilla. Heavy vanilla. What do you all think? Do you like that? So if you said this. 96 proof, yes. Landon or Christine, if you said this, I apologize. How old is this? So this, it's aged for four years and finished for six more months in the secondary oak barrel. Gotcha. So the age is four years. Yep. How long have you all, you said this was an 18? So the, uh, the brand itself dates back to 1874. If any of you guys are into bourbon history, this was formerly produced at the Glenmore Distillery. Out everybody, in everybody, hold, whisper, 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 please. Whisper, please. Did you guys get that? Whisper. 
No, they didn't get it. Hold on. Yeah, Whisper. so this was this was formerly produced at the old Glenmore Distillery out in Owensboro, which is now uh, the Green River Distilling Company. But uh, Luxco actually purchased this brand, believe it or not, back in 1993, along with Ezra Brooks. So back in the 70s and 80s, of course, bourbon sales, they were tanking. No one was really drinking it. Things were going over to the, the craft beer, the, the clear spirits. Um, so that old distillery did shut down. It's since reopened. It was the OZ Tyler Distillery. Now it's been renamed to Green River. Uh, but our company has owned the Davis County brand for about 25 or so years now. We just didn't really do anything with it because it wasn't doing so hot. So back in 2020, uh, we reinvented it and came out with these four expressions um, and everybody know what happened in early 2020 right nothing great came out of that so we had a, a release party at the distillery for Davis County in February of that year and then everything hit the fan in March uh, but this is now out in about 36 states across the country um, especially the the three flagships are the the uh, limited batch that you guys are trying was just out in select states and now it's done of course so yeah Questions. do you have a question any questions out there? I've got a question. Tell us about when Luxro came to Bardstown. So we, uh, we came to Bardstown, as I mentioned earlier, we opened our doors in 2018, um, but it actually starts, started back in 2012 as the bourbon uh, boom started to increase. Um, we were contracting our production through other distilleries. I'm sure you guys know who they are. Um, with a quick Google search, you can find out. Uh, but that other distillery and ourselves included needed the production space to meet the demand for both of our portfolio of brands. Um, so it was either find somebody else to distill it for us or build our own distillery. So in 2015, we purchased a property down in Bardstown after searching several other sites, um, not only in Kentucky, but Tennessee, Indiana, other facilities, but obviously Kentucky was the right choice. Um, and Bardstown fit well with being in the bourbon capital. Um, we broke ground 2016, opened two years later. Thank you, Landon. All right, any questions? We've got a question from Facebook. Tell us about Don, Don Lux. What's his history? How did he get involved in the business? Where did he come from? Yeah, so um, Don Lux has been in the business for a little over 30 years now. His father, Paul, actually founded the, uh, the business back in 1958 with uh, his father-in-law, David Sherman. So the company was formerly known as the David Sherman Corporation in St. Louis up until uh, 2006. Uh, so on Don Lux's 30th birthday, his father gave him the company. Um, so that's a pretty good birthday gift, of course. Um, but unfortunately, his father, Paul, passed away in 2005, and in 2006, they renamed the company Luxco. Um, so um, actually, last year, about a year ago, our company merged with MGP, Midwest Grain Products, back on April 1st of 2021. Um, and Don is now the single largest shareholder of MGP. So he's still got his hand in the kitchen, um, as well as our president of Luxco as well. So, so in case you're wondering, and I don't think my son Connor's paying attention, but I'm going to give you the big bourbon club when I die. There's a note with the bank on that. There's debt with it. There's no revenue on it. But that's what, like Mr. Lux gave us. All right, let's pour. Let's, uh, Christina, Landon, you want to tell us yeah. about the second let's drink? Go, Christina, let's go in and get them into to Rebel. Yes. Okay, it's on. So Rebel is going to be our weeded bourbon, and it is a Rebel Distillers collection. The fun thing about working at a distillery, not only getting to drink 40 hours every day on the job, is that <laughs> once you're there for a year, you actually have the opportunity to pick single barrels. Those barrels then go on to sell in our visitor center. You get one bottle for free, you get the rest at cost, and you get to take home the barrel at ages in. So this is actually picked by a woman named Caitlin Nally, and she helps with our single barrel production program. Again, it's Rebel Distillers, so it's going to be our weeded single barrel. Looks like this barrel was filled on March 23rd, 2017, and she picked this at the beginning of the year, so about five years old, and 113 in proof. Now, with your weeded single barrels, tend to think a little sweeter. I've actually had this barrel, so I'm gonna let you decide after you taste it if you get that traditional sweet wheat or if you're possibly picking up something else. Now, we wanted to bring this one on because you guys did get to taste, or you did pick and are gonna taste, our Ezra cash drink, so we wanted to have something for the wheat lovers in the audience. How many of you guys like a weeded bourbon? Couple of us. Wheat bourbon's super popular right now. 
Um, so we do the Rebel Distillers. That's normally when we send kits out into the bourbon community and they decide on what they want. And then we do Rebel Cash Strength, which is a store pick done on property. If you've ever been to Luxro, you've probably seen the beautiful stone house that dates back to 1806. So it is a historic property, but liquor stores, restaurants, and bars, they come taste in that stone house and they pick the Cash Strength, which is what Big Bourbon Club got to do with our Ezra brand, and those tend to be about 120 in proof. So again, y'all, you're trying our Rebel Weeded Distillers. It's about five years old, 113 in proof, and cheers round two. She. Caitlin Nally, are you, you're my not listener, aren't you? So Caitlin Nally is actually our assistant barrel program coordinator, and she works with all the barrel picks. She leads the tours and does a lot of the administrative side. Gotta love women in bourbon, right? I'm glad to see so many women out in the audience, and hopefully there's a bunch of women listening at home. But cheers, y'all, and enjoy that Rebel Distillers collection. Okay, what do you all think? Okay, everybody, everybody settle down. Everybody settle down. Settle down. Ed, settle down. All right, I've got Beverly's table. Settle down. Everybody else settle down. What did you all think? Give me, give me some flavor profiles. And if you don't, I'm going to call on you. Creme, creme brulee on a Sunday morning. Right now. So you're serious. Love it. Love it. Creme brulee. What else you get? What is it? Cherry. Cherry on the front? Kind of sweet? I will, I will say, and I think Christina will agree with me on this one, out of all the, uh, the Rebel Distillers collections that we've done at the Visitor Center, this one's by far the most unique one that we've had. Um, the, the, the cherry is a common note. Uh, I like the creme brulee note, actually. That, that pairs well with it. Um, hey, Landon. Yeah. The guy who said creme brulee is an executive bourbon steward. Yeah. So he knows what he's talking about. There we go. 
Me too. Us too. Yeah. Any, anything else out there? Any other questions about Rebel in general? Would you get? Plum. Plum. Beverly. Nice. Did anybody get some more kind of Scotch style notes? Hold, uh, Beverly, stand up. We can't hear you. I'll bring a mic. Hold on. Everybody listen. You got it. Scotch and you peaty. Got it. Earthy, herbal. That's what, I, that's what I meant when I said this is the most unique one that we've had. Because uh, we've done a lot of barrel picks, and uh, those earthy notes are real polarizing. Um, you, you, you've got people that, that love those, and you've got people that aren't such a fan of those. So people either love it or hate it. Um, but this one, it, we've already sold out at the gift shop, so, so a lot of people seem to like this one. But so everybody, get that one. everybody, everybody, settle down. Settle down. We're only on the second one. Raise your hand if you've ever had Rebel before tonight. All right, raise your hand if you haven't had it before tonight. Some of you haven't. Okay. Raise your hand if you've never had the Davis County before tonight. So most of you haven't had the Davis County. Have you had the, raise your hand if you've never had the Davis County Double Oak. So, so that's new for everybody. Cool. cool. Raise your hand one more time if you haven't had the Rebel. So quite a few of you, a third of you. Yeah. By the way, Big Bourbon Club, we're going to have a Rebel pick this year. So we haven't announced when because we don't know when. I'm waiting for Mr. Ballantyne to confirm. But uh, we're going to do a – so I believe your pick program as you do Ezra or Rebel, right? Yes. Or Orphan Barrel, and I think we have the Orphan Barrel coming up. No Orphan Barrel. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was Different hoping, distillery. I was hoping <laughs> – I'm sorry. You have, to, you have to call Stitzeweller for that one. No. Who, what is your – what's your – never you're thinking mind. Of, you're thinking of Blood Oath. Blood Oath. I was just Similar testing you. Similar shape. So can we do a Blood Oath Barrel pick? <laughs> I want to do, I'm first in line for that one. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a rebel pick this year. I, I, I screwed up and I, and I tried. You're trying to get more bourbon. We see what you're doing. Trying to get the good stuff. I'm sorry? The, the, the next Blood Oath? Yeah, so let's just let the cat out of the bag. I'm sure you guys are wondering about Blood Oath. Um, so uh, it's one of our ultra premium brands that's released once a year. Um, this is now the eighth year that we've released Blood Oath. It's this bottle right here. This is last year's version. Um, but every year our master distiller, John Rempe, goes out to other distilleries and uh, finds different bourbons that he thinks complement each other really well. Hey, do you guys want to listen to this? Hey, Perfect. Everybody hold it. Settle down. Because it's getting really loud. There's, there's going to be a pop quiz after this for prizes, so I want you guys to pay attention. Uh, but going back into Blood Oath, um, like I said, our master distiller goes around to other uh, contract distillers and samples a lot of their bourbons that they're producing and always selects three extra age for a unique blend. Um, so what's coming out later this month is um, a blend of, I believe it's an 8-year, an 11-year, and a 14-year-old. They're all rye bourbons, um, not whiskeys. Uh, they're at 98.6 proof, and it's finished for about six months in a Calvados bottle. So it's like a, an apple brandy finish. It's something that we've never done before. Last year we did a, a Sauternes finish in that blue label. We've done port, uh, cognac, Caribbean rum. We're always switching it up, and that's our most limited product that we produce as a distillery. Um, we do about 50,000 bottles a year of that, and once it's gone, that's all she wrote. Um, every three years we do release a trilogy set of uh, three different editions combined into one gifted box. And we've actually got a few of those left over at the distillery uh, currently this week uh, from packs four, five, and six from 2020, or 2019, 2020, and 2021. So that's a little backstory on Blood Oath. But uh, how are we doing so far on the first two samples we've had? Good? Nice. Good deal. So raise your hand if you prefer the Davis County Double Oak over the Rebel. It's probably more than half. Raise your hand if you prefer the Rebel over the. All right, we're getting pretty close. Pretty he, close. He's, he's excited about the Rebel back there in the corner. Nice. All right, are we ready to go on to the to the next so, one? So we have or? a question from uh, Facebook Live. Yeah, what's up? It used to be called Rebel Yell. This was going to pop. Is it called Rebel Yell anymore? Or is it called Rebel? It is. So we dropped the yell of the name. So it's just a natural progression of the, the evolution of the brand. Um, it's been called a lot of different things over the years. It does trace its roots back to, uh, to 1849. Um, it was formerly produced at Stitzelwella Distillery. We purchased it back in 99. Um, and uh, we really brand the spirit as kind of embracing your inner rebel spirit. Um, so 
we just dropped the L. People call it Rebel anyways, Rebel Single Barrel, Rebel Distillers Collection, Rebel 10 Year. Um, so that's the, the decision that we made a couple years ago. Hey, Carter. We're, we're ready to go and whenever you guys are. Um, was it, did it have anything to do with the 150th anniversary of the Civil War and after 150 years we can just drop it, Rebel Yell? Uh, well, the 150 years was several, several years, years ago. Back. So today, trivia question, pay attention. I'm going to give away a Blood Oath hat. Pay attention. We're going to do these next. All right, here we go. Callahan's are not into this because they're going to know the answer. They know all, they always win the trivia. <laughs> you're, of, of course you're entered into this. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Chris? Yeah, who was the first ambassador to France? Benjamin Franklin. Today, today, anniversary. What happened on this date, and I'm not going to tell you the year because you'll know it, but a very important historical thing in America happened on this date, and I'm going to give you one hint. The street I live on, Colonel, have you ever heard of Colonel Anderson Parkway? Yeah. Raise your hand if you heard of Colonel Anderson Parkway. Robert Anderson was shot upon, and what did that represent on this date? Mr. Callahan. First shot of the Civil War was today, 1861. Robert Anderson, the street that I live on, the big house on Hurstburn Lane, he was the colonel in charge of Fort Sumter. And of course, who shot upon him? His old classmate from West Point was who? Pierre Beauregard. I am so impressed with you two more than anybody here. All right. You, you've, got to, you've got to take off that old Irish hat and put on this hat. Bottle of Blood Oath Pack 8 is sewed separately. The, Calla, the Callahans, it, it's like Joe DiMaggio. They're on a 56-game streak. They have not missed in 56 presentations we've had. All right, we have a Facebook question. How many barrels would Lux produce a day? So uh, right now we're producing about, uh, about 100 barrels a day, seven days a week. Everybody listen up. They can't hear you on Facebook in Heatherland. But uh, I say currently we're doing 100 barrels. We're in the midst of an expansion project. We're doing a $4 million expansion. So later this year, the end of quarter four, uh, we're going to add uh, uh, 14 more fermenters that are double the size of what we're doing right now. Right now, we've only got 12 8,000-gallon fermenters. So we're really going to up production, and we're going to go over to a 24-7 operation. So by next year, we'll be producing about 50,000 barrels a year. Right now, we're doing about half of that. So you're doing 25,000 barrels a year now for all the yep. brands. Yes. And all of that is made in Louisville. Bardstown. Excuse me, Bardstown. Yes. Well, the, yeah, sorry, it's twice I've screwed up. What's the plan with MGP in terms of their allocations, their juice? Yeah, so uh, of course MGP, they're based out of Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They're one of the biggest producers of bulk whiskey in the world. Um, all of our bourbon brands that are for our branded spirits category, whether it's Luxro or Limestone Branch down in Lebanon, those are all going to remain Kentucky bourbons. So they're all going to be produced um, down south, about an hour and a half south of us, uh, between all of those brands uh, in the family. Um, with the merger with MGP, we've actually gained access to a lot more resources because MGP is divided into three different subcategories. They've got their bulk spirits that, you know, they do a lot of contracting for other distilleries in the area. They've got their branded spirits. And what a lot of people don't know is they also have a plant-based food category at their plant out in Natchez, Kansas. Um, so MGP is a massive company. We're thrilled to be partners with them. Um, out of all the brands that are now coming out of both facilities, Luxco products account for about 40% of the total share now. Um, so we've gained you know, a, a really good partner. It's not really an acquisition, it's more of a, a merger, basically. And what's the uh, plan with Limestone Branch? Uh, we're just gonna keep making a lot of good quality Yellowstone bourbon, uh, Bowling and Birch Gin, and Minor Case Rye Whiskey. So this is a comment on Facebook, don't screw up Limestone. Gonna, I'm not going to do the Stephen Fonte show, <laughs> if any of you guys know who that is. Stephen Fonte. He I'm surprised was, he's not here tonight. One of the great, one of the great right. friends and ambassadors, right? Okay. 
So have we poured? We poured number three, right? Yes. So, so before we, before, go ahead, Landon. No, what were you about to say? Well, I was going to, I was going to stop the show for a second. Uh, before we start the, th you could sip on it before we talk about it. I want to introduce a couple of good friends here tonight. Uh, Sean Higgins in the back. Sean, stand up. Sean owns Mint. No, that's stand up. Sean. Sean owns Mint Julep Tours in Derby City Express, the number one tour company in Kentucky and, and Tennessee. Sean, thanks for being a friend and a member, and thanks for being you, Sean. Um, let me introduce and bring, so, let me bring someone up for a couple of seconds here. Brian McDaniel, Brian, come on up. Beverage Barn is our new liquor store partner with the Big Bourbon Club. Beverage Barn is based in Henderson, Kentucky, and they're the, one of the largest, if not the largest, he'll tell you, uh, liquor store chains in western Kentucky. But on, listen up, y'all, on the Big Bourbon app, you know the topics, right? On the topics, we have a brand new one starting tonight called Liquor Store Partner, and it says Beverage Barn. So make sure you go and follow it because Brian's going to do something really cool. This is Jack Meredith and I drove down couple years, Jack, I didn't say raise your hand. I just, just <laughs> come on, big dog. So, <laughs> somebody give Jack, a hey, Mercurio, give him a phone book. <laughs> give Jack a phone book to stand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's about 13 feet tall when he does that. Jack and I drove down to Beverage Barn for one of their monthly allocation nights. There's probably 100 people there. It was a huge buzz. It was a great night. He's got as good, as, a collect, a, as good of a collection as anybody, and he holds back allocated bottles at normal prices for everybody. But what we want to do, and this is up to Brian, Brian Brian's, this is his idea, is do an allocation virtually on the Big Bourbon Club through the app on the topic. So I'll let him explain it more. It's not completely defined, but he is our Big Bourbon Club liquor store partner. Everybody welcome Brian McDaniel. All right, first and foremost, thanks. thank you, Steve, for having us out here today. I really appreciate it. But, yeah, as Steve said, you know, whenever he started this uh, meeting today, he talked about bourbon being about friends and about the experience. And that's really the same with the beverage barn. That's what we want. I hate the secondary market. I hate the secondary, secondary market more than anything because the people who are making the money on the secondary market isn't the distillery. It isn't the retailer. It's the people in the middle that are taking it from the retailer and flipping it to the end consumer, okay? So I, I understand why retailers nowadays are marking up and, and excluding that middleman. My business plan is, is not that at all. So twice a month, we have a allocated bourbon raffle where we have people coming to the store. Everybody gets one ticket, no purchase necessary. You just have to be there to win. And if your name is drawn, First person gets first pick. So if your name's drawn and we have a Pappy 15 year on the table, then that's your pick for $200. And that's what we do. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring that to the app. As Steve alluded to, we're going to be on the app. If you guys have any questions, if you guys uh, have questions about allocated bottles, how the process works, there's a lot of questions I get every day about uh, Sazerac, Buffalo Trace, Weller, Blanton's and all those things, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be on the app. I'll be answering questions. And what I like to do is offer a raffle once a month for Big Bourbon Club members only. I feel like a politician up here. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I'm not. I'm not a politician. All right. So once a month for Big Bourbon Club members, free members or any member for that matter, uh, you will either have to come to a meeting to acquire the bottle or you'd have to come to the Beverage Barn in Western Kentucky. So we have three stores in Henderson. We have a store in Morganfield, Kentucky. You can go to any of those stores or come to this meeting to acquire a bottle. There's more to come. I'll be reaching out to Steve, and by next meeting, we should have uh, more stuff to put out. Okay. So I'd like to bring a couple members of my podcast up here uh, to talk about it. So here's the, the real man behind, behind everything, Brent Bridges. 
Hello, I'm Brent. Uh, we have Distilled Bourbon Podcast, which you can find on distilledbourbonpodcast.com. You can find us on YouTube or on Facebook. And uh, really the success of our little podcast are my two co-hosts. You know what Brian does besides running the country? Uh, he owns the uh, four beverage barns, uh, and he knows everybody in the business and every bourbon or liquor that you can imagine. He's our inside man. Now, uh, next to Brian is Chuck Stinnett. Chuck is uh, our walking encyclopedia. He, uh, he knows everything there is to know about all topics. Uh, he, is a, he is honestly a member of the Kentucky Journalism Hall of Fame. Uh, he is retired from journalism, but uh, he is a, a brilliant writer and he's been to almost every distillery in the Commonwealth. If they would quit making them, he would, make the, he would get to all of them. But we'll let uh, Chuck tell you a little bit about what we talk about. So with the Distilled Bourbon Podcast, we've been hitting a, a variety of things. We've been visiting distilleries. We've been to Green River. Of course, we're in western Kentucky, so we're hitting our hometown distilleries first. We've been to Green River. We did a video tour there. We've been to uh, M.B. Uh, Rowland, Casey Jones. Uh, we visited Kentucky Peerless. We've got plans to go to uh, Three Boys maybe this fall, uh, Spirits of French Lick. We've done some uh, some kind of a consumer theme uh, uh, podcast. We did a theme on uh, our favorite bourbons under sixty dollars. Uh, our favorite bourbons under thirty dollars. Right now, we're producing a podcast about barrel aging cocktails using a little two liter charred barrel that uh, uh, we get from uh, Oak Barrels Limited. Uh, I bought mine from uh, Independent Stave in Lebanon, hoping it was made by Independent Stave. No, I. By the way. I guarantee you that 75% of the people in this room know more about bourbon and, 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 uh, and distilleries and so forth than, than I do. I will just say this much. I started bring, drinking bourbon in, a, let's say, semi-legally in about 1975. I never knew it went out of fashion. I didn't get the damn memo. I've been drinking bourbon the whole time. So anyway, God bless you all. Hey, Chuck, real quick, one question for you. From the, this is from Facebook Live. Who's the greatest guest you've ever had on your podcast? Steve Higdon. Steve, Steve Higdon by far. Wow, that is actually, that actually uh, it, 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 it's Uncle Steve. Okay, that was a lie. I asked the question. It wasn't from Facebook. How do they get my podcast? So, let me start off by saying our wives told us when we started this that we had the faces for radio. So originally we started off as audio only, and then within the last few months, season two, we switched to YouTube. So you can still get our audio only a pod, audio only podcast anywhere you find your podcast, uh, but we also have a YouTube channel as well. All right, guys, thank you. Had so much fun. Thank you all so much. Chuck Billy Reed is a good friend of mine. You probably know Billy. Good, very good friend. Thank you. All right. So I heard Brian say that we're going to do this every week. We're going to do an allocation every week. He's not even listening. Never mind. I don't know how the hell we're going to do this every month. But either I'll go to Henderson with Jack, Jack will drive me down there, we'll pick him up, or he'll bring him to the next event, or we'll get him to you. But on the Big Bourbon Club app, follow, follow the topic, liquor, well, beverage barn, but liquor partner, I think is what we call it. Follow it, and we'll figure out the rules of how we're going to do this thing. This is a big deal for us. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, you ready to get into the nuts and bolts of why we're here? Let's do it. So um, the uh, third sample that uh, just came around to all of you guys um, is actually a barrel strength sample. So we're here for the Ezra Brooks cash strength pick tonight. What we're going to do now is we're going to kind of simulate the way that we do barrel picks at the distillery. Um, so can I just get a show of hands of who's actually done a barrel pick before? Gone to a distillery, done it. So a lot of you guys have. I know a lot of distilleries do it different ways where you, you know, pull a sample out of it, um, kind of like we do, or you actually thieve out of a barrel. Well, this is the way that we do it. So what we've just passed around to all of you guys um, is a sample pulled straight out of one of the barrels aging in our rickhouses. Um, so we've got a few different samples, so not everybody has the same single barrel, but you guys get the gist of it. This is using our rye bourbon mash bill. So everybody has the same mash bill. It's 78% uh, corn. 
got a real high corn content to it, and it's only 10% rye uh, and 12% malted barley. So, uh, for example, the one I've got in front of me uh, has been around since April 22nd of 2017. So all of the samples that we provided for you guys are right around that four to five year age range. So um, I want you guys to go in and try this one. This is true barrel strength, so the proofs are going to vary. They're going to be anywhere between 123 up to 128 proof. So you guys enjoy it. You guys let me know if you have any questions. And then the next sample that we're going to come around is the final product. Blood Oath. That's next month. Orphan Barrel? No, no, no. Blood Oath. That's, that's next year when they're out of it. Yeah, we're not <laughs> even talking about Sitzer Weller. Landon, how many different expressions here are we tasting? I know there's more than one. Um, we passed around six or eight different six sample eight. bottles, so they're all going to vary. I don't have the bottles in front of me anymore, but... Got a question for you. This is for me. Have you all been to what I believe is the greatest money shot in all of the distillery land, but luxury... Rick House, where you're supposed to get your picture. Raise your hand if you've been there. Do you know what I'm talking about? Raise it high. If, if you've been on tour at Lux Row, you've seen it. If you've not been on a tour of Lux Row... If you've not been a, if you, you, we were there together, but their Rick, I don't know if it's, what's the name of that Rick House? Is it Rick House One or? It's just Rick House One. Yep. Rick House One, it is the most incredible photo site. It's like going to, it's like going to Yellowstone National Park in front of the river. It's the best, it's the best picture spot in all of Kentucky for any distillery. Yeah, in my thanks, for, thanks for pointing that out. We've actually got that on our, on our rack card here, a small portion of it, but picks don't do it justice. When we were designing the, uh, the visitor experience of how we were going to make ourselves unique, of course, distilleries are a dime a dozen these days, and that's a great thing. Um, but uh, we knew we wanted to incorporate the aging process in a new, unique way. Uh, so when we opened up Rick House One, we took out two rows that would be you know, strategically placed right there in the front so you can see all the way up to the sixth floor of the Rick House. So you can really look at hundreds of barrels all at one glance. If you go to an older distillery, you don't really get that. You're kind of trapped on that ground level. It's dark, it's old, it's dirty. Uh, so this kind of opens things up in a new light. Thanks for pointing yeah, that out, Steve. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's the best spot to take a picture of any distillery around, in my opinion. We've got a question from uh, TikTok Live. TikTok is asking, uh, what type of stills do you use? So we use a, a column still and a doubler. Double distillation process. We've got a 43-foot copper column still produced by Vendome. It's 36 inches in diameter. Um, and then we've also got a doubler. So we do the, uh, the, the high-volume stuff at Lux Row. Okay, so I've got a trivia question. And the winner gets this bottle of double oak. So there's one person here that I know of <laughs> that is the third great grandson of Elmore Sherman who found, I'm not joking, who founded Vendome, Elmore Sherman. The third great grandson is here of Elmore Sherman who founded Vendome Copper. Does anybody know who that is? Yeah. Connor, congratulations, you're the winner. <laughs> You're the third great-grandson of Vendome Copper's founder. You didn't know that, but I just introduced you. Mom is the second great. You're the third. Holy cheap shit. Act like you've been here before, son. Act like you've been here before. So my wife's great-grandfather is the founder of Vendome really? Copper. That is awesome. Yeah, Elmore Sherman. Connor, you want a free bottle, and there should be four tour tickets for you to bring three other people to our visitor center on us at Lux Row. Bring your dad. It, not as a designated driver, though. <laughs> you guys can uh, have Mint Julep take you all around. There we go. Do you know how to do that? We're in. Sean Higgins, my man. Mint Julep's a great partner of us down at Lux Row. So thank you, guys. Thanks, thanks for being here. I email your whole team every single day. Sean, what'd you say? You're right. He probably can. You probably can. All right. So, All right. have we tasted? Yeah. What do you guys think? This, I mean, this is hot. We're, we're not gonna lie. It's true barrel strength, but I gotta, it's a low I gotta, rye mash bill. What's I, up? I gotta tell you something. Tom Reed has, has the most discriminating palate of anybody in the club, and you really do. You know what you're doing, 
and you're a little bit picky, kind of Tennessee picky. What do you think, Tom? Good. Can we put that on the website? You said something's fantastic. They're All the vary. proofs vary. So I don't know exactly what was poor for you, but... They're all anywhere between 123 and 127 proof. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Of, a lot of, um, especially with this Ezra Brooks mash bill, you know, with the, the small rye content, it's only 10%. A lot of rye bourbons out there have a lot more rye in it. Um, as you guys know, I'm not a huge high rye fan myself, so it works out well that I manage a distillery that's got a low rye mash bill, and we also do a weeded bourbon too. Yeah. Do we have a rye? Yes, we do produce, um, not at Lux Row, but MGP does an Ezra Brooks rye whiskey for us. Um, and that has your traditional green label. Um, it's out there in liquor stores. I don't see a whole lot anymore, but it's a 51% rye mash bill, 45% corn, and 4% malted barley. Yep, 90 proof. Yep. Everybody listen up. Or less. Everybody yep. listen up, Chuck. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that's a great question. You had a question, you know, bourbon's got to go into the barrel less than 125 proof. For us at Luxro, everything goes in at 124.9 proof. Some distilleries, uh, I'm not going to name names, but they'll go in at even lower, 110, 115 proof. Um, it all depends on where it's placed in that rickhouse. Uh, we don't do any temperature control in our rickhouses. We don't do any rotation of barrels. So uh, barrels that are on the fourth, fifth, sixth floors, on the outside edges where it's just baking in that hot summer heat, that heat is going to evaporate the water out of that barrel faster than the alcohol. So you're going to gain alcohol percentage, higher proof. The opposite is going to happen on the lower levels on the inside ricks as well, where the alcohol will evaporate just a little bit faster than the water will. I don't know. I'm not a chemist, so you're asking the wrong guy on that one. I know, right? I'm a marketing guy. I like to sell you guys some good bourbon. It's, it's actually a very good question, though, right? Um, any other questions out there? So we've got a question from Facebook. Uh, we released the Ezra Brooks barrel pick that we're getting ready to taste. We haven't tasted it yet. A little bit early, but Christina, I talked to you about this today. So the question is, the barrel pick that you've ordered and is in the back is 120 proof. But when we picked it, it was at 127 and change. Yes. Why is it called cast drink when it's actually not cast drink? Landon made a great example about us being marketing people, and you'll start to find it throughout bourbon. When you do cast strength uncut unfiltered, for different states, it tends to be different when it comes to tax money. And as y'all probably know, Uncle Sam loves his tax money when it comes to bourbon. So we use cash strength as more of a marketing term. Cash strength is going to be on that spectrum of uncut. Like Landon said, some people put liquid into the barrel really low, so they're going to have a lower cash strength. Whereas us putting it in at 124.9, we're going to have a, a higher cash strength. So in reality, it's really just a marketing term. It's an adjective we in the industry use to define something that's higher in proof that can be on that spectrum of 110 to 130. Does and, that make sense? Yeah, and, and to add on to what you just said, it kind of goes along with the term small batch, right? There's no specific definition on what makes a small batch a small batch. Technically, a small batch is one barrel less than what you're normally producing on a normal day anyways. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but with cash strength, uh, the, the technical definition is that it's not significantly diluted with water or anything else. So cash strength, barrel strength, barrel proof, they all mean the same thing. Um, that's kind of how we get away with it. And to add on to the question that was asked, Steve, we chose 120 proof for all of our cash strength bourbons because it's easier for accounting and operations uh, purposes at our bottling line. When you have, because um, uh, we don't do just bourbons, we do a lot of other spirits, so our bottling line is running crazy 24-7. Um, we would have to change out the labels, every single thing for each individual barrel. And when we're running juice through that for, you know, 24-hour periods, we're doing, we're also making Everclear, you guys. So we're running that for a long time. When we're doing Hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. Yeah. 
Hold on. I'm thinking about starting an Everclear club. Has anybody had Everclear before? We've all had Everclear. Let's there you go. I love it. There we go. Love it. But, you know, as we're doing all these other high-volume products, then we have to stop operations and switch over to do one single barrel that's got 200 bottles in it. It's a lot of work. Um, so we just had selected 120 proof for both Ezra and Rebel. That's a long-winded answer for that one question. Oh, that, that's a great answer. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Taste? Profiles? What'd you get? Mint. Mint? Mint. Yeah. She's Mint ready finish. for the derby. For sure. There we go. Yeah, there we go, right? <laughs> Uh-huh. So bourbon is the, the word that makes it different, right? Bourbon has to be at least 51% corn. We classify our mash bills, either a rye bourbon or a wheated bourbon, because rye and wheat are the flavoring grains, the middle grain. So if it's got bourbon in there, you know it's ensured to be at least 51% corn. We just say rye because we want to let people know what the flavoring grain is inside of it. Uh, apparently a lot of other distilleries don't do that, but... Uh, we, we just do it because we want to allow the consumer to know what's in it. If it's a rye bourbon, there's no wheat at all in it. Yep. Yep, so it's just corn, rye, and barley in this one. Yeah, what's up? Preach it. Hey, Brian, hold up, hold up. So David Nicholson, 100 proof, black label, uh, other states, they just can't get it. Probably one of the most underrated bourbons on the market. Why don't you guys market that more? Is that more of a supply issue? So I, I'm assuming it's supply. I know there's demand outside the state, but in Kentucky with my retail liquor stores, we get it constantly. Uh, so is there a reason you don't push that brand more? Yeah, honestly, supply is a big reason of it. Um, you know. Any distillery right now is having you know, supply chain issues. With us, we don't have the amount of bourbon to supply the need for our brands. Even products like our standard four-year-old Ezra Brooks that's 90 proof, the well bourbon, that's allocated this year. Um, so we're in a tough situation where you guys are, it's a good problem to be in because all of our bourbon's being sold, but we don't have the barrels to supply the different brands. David Nicholson Reserve, this one right here in the middle with the black label, that one is a seven-year-old bourbon. So it's hard to find that HG, so it's a, you know, basically to supply the need for the, the brand, basically. But yeah, David Nicholson, I would agree, it's a, it's a slept-on brand. We have two different versions of it. We've got the rye bourbon version. We all know what that is. We just defined it. And we've got a weeded recipe as well. Any other questions, you guys? Cool. All right. Steve, are ready to go on to the last one? Thank you. Any questions? We've got some giveaways. We have a Barrelhead giveaway. Rebel. Woo! Ke Callahan's. Don't get all excited. It's not going to be about 70s baseball or Civil War history. We're going to give something hard this time. It's not going to be about Braveheart movie either. Okay. We've got some great giveaways. Any other questions? Any other thoughts about what we just tried that is not sold anywhere other than they brought it here for us? Thank you Thank very you. much. This is the quietest big bourbon group I've ever heard. I think we're ready. Uh, hold on. There was one other question on Facebook. Let me see if I can find it. Is Don Lux from Luxembourg? No. <laughs> Thank you. Todd. Question for our master distiller. Um, so we did the Rebel 12 year reserve. Uh, that was kind of a one and done release, uh, sold exclusively at the distillery. Um, that was just two different Rebel single barrels that were aged 12 years. Um, so it, it was a big hit, so who knows? It may be something that you know is down the pipeline next year, uh, but as of right now, we do not have plans for Rebel 13. Similar question from Facebook. Alex Callen in Little Rock, Arkansas. The poor side of Little Rock, by the way. <laughs> Alex is asking, is the Rebel Rye discontinued? And I'm going to say for the record that I made it one of my top five ryes last year. I love it. And Alex asks, is it discontinued? Because that's the rumor. 
Uh, well, I'm here to unfortunately squash some rumors. Um, I do not have any information that the Rebel Small Batch Rye Whiskey is being discontinued. I will say the Rebel 80 Proof Bourbon will likely get discontinued over the next few years. But not the Rye Whiskey, to my knowledge. That's great news. That is incredible. And for less than 20 bucks a bottle, have you raise your hand. Have you had the Rebel Rye? Raise it high. If you haven't had it, folks, it's how much is it? 20 bucks a bottle? 18? I mean, it varies, but yeah, you're headed on the money. It's, it's very inexpensive, and I can promise you, go look at my video on it. I made it a top five of all the rides, including the Angels Envy, the big ones. It's incredible. It is incredible. It's the greatest steal on the market in terms of price point and value of the bourbon, or the, the rye. All right, so should we go? He's got a question over here. Another question? Uh, it'll, it, it's going to hit the market later this month, and uh, we expect to get it at the distillery, if not later this month, early May. So give us a call, and we'll let, us, we'll let you know if we got it or not. Yeah, you can do that. Somebody will be there to answer the phone for sure. As far as uh, any of our any of any brand. Um, we did um, a few years ago, we actually did a rebel bourbon that was finished in a French oak barrel and we did that for Europe. Um, that was sold, I think it was fr uh, France is the only place that we did it, France and Spain maybe. Um, but to my knowledge, that's the only product that's not sold here in Kentucky or in the States. Okay, Paul sent a question. Uh, well, we only did it in the parking lot because of COVID. Um, we, so we have another one that's similar to the, uh, the Rebel Distillers Collection. It's the younger sister of the uh, Ezra Cash Strength. So we do a distillers collection of both Rebel and Ezra and a Cash Strength of both Rebel and Ezra as well. Um, so we, we actually we have Ezra Distillers at the distillery currently right now. Yep. And the one that you did out in the, the parking lot, that was my pick. I actually, I actually did the very first one in summer 2020, and no one got to taste it at the distillery. So I was really bummed, but it sold out in one weekend, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Okay, so we're pouring the fourth one, which is the Ezra Brooks Big Bourbon Club Barrel Pick. And in all seriousness, Connor does not get this double. Davis County. No, 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 no. That, that's inside baseball, big dog. It's my kid. He doesn't get. He doesn't get that shit. I get it because I'm married. No, 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 no. So let's do this. We're gonna give this to the person who drove the furthest to come to the event tonight. Lovely. I'm sorry. The rich side of Anchorage isn't it, Scott? <laughs> Gavin Caney. No. No chance. All right. I'm gonna give it. We're gonna give this for real to whoever drove the furthest. So I know I've got some folks at this table from Columbus and Tennessee. Who drove the furthest? I came up from spring break in Miami. <laughs> Vacation doesn't count. <laughs> Tom. How many miles, Tom? I don't know. Pull up your, there's, there's a new app called Waze. It just came out like yesterday. Yeah. Download it. And put in Springfield, Tennessee. All right. I think Columbus is more than that. We got 210 over here. Bourbon Jenny? Hold on. I don't know how to do the auction. Do we? We got 229 on the south side of Columbus. Do we have anything more than 229? Do we have 230 out here? Do we, Jenny? Danielle, what do you have? 213. Did you did you put your address into this address? Yeah, put it in. Oh, you're. Th so we, we're gonna have a little dog fight here. <laughs> your brother's in Sevilla, but you're not here. Anybody who drove the furthest? Do we have Columbus, Ohio? Danielle? I think 229. Danielle, I'm okay if you cheat. I'll give it to you now. 
You're the greatest. All right. Todd, thank you so much for coming in from Columbus, my man. And there, there are also four. So Connor Higdon asked if you'd send him a handshake. <laughs> By the way, Todd comes in not only for this event. Where's Keith? Keith comes in every – you come in from Dayton or Centerville, wherever you come from, but Todd comes in almost every single – in fact, you were on the barrel pick, right? Yep. All right, you earned that, my man. Congratulations. All right, so we're pouring number four, and so I want you all to know that I was told that uh, Christina was going to be our hostess tonight. And it turned out that I knew her last name. Her dad and I were, were old friends from a long time ago, and your dad is one of the few guys I've ever beaten golf. Nikki Rapier from Salt River Electric. I used to go to my old Kentucky home golf course and beat him like a drum. I'd shoot like a 98, and he'd shoot like 107. And I was going to say that's not a big accomplishment, Steve. I didn't, I didn't say it was a big accomplishment. I said I beat your dad like a drum, and I did. Nikki goes to drink beer at the golf course. So did, so did Steve. Love your dad. It's been a long time. Love your dad. We're trying to get him to drink bourbon, but we're just not there yet. That's all right. He's getting too old to where it matters anymore. So, <laughs> How old is your dad? He's my age. Turned 61. I'm 59. So. so that is David Beckman's wife, Regina Beckman's brother. So we know the whole family here. Whole family. All right, everybody. Any questions? Do we, uh, do we all have our fourth sample ready? Almost? So, poor, give it, so what, I got a question for you. Tell us about, tell us about the campus in Barstown. How many acres is it? How big is it? Uh, so at Lux Road, we've got 90 acres. So we, we purchased a historic property uh, back in 2015. It's got a historic home. It was built back in 1806. And we just finished restoring it um, a couple of years ago. And that is actually where we do all of our barrel picks. So. If you guys come down to the distillery, do another pick with us, we'll host you in the room. Well, that's where we were. Yep. So that was built in 1806. 1806. So hold on a second. Trivia question. Anybody else in here lives in a home that was built in 1806? Stand up. No, hold on. Stand up. Big Jack. 1806 right here. And the addition to his house was built in 1811. 1820. 1820. Tell him where you live. Right off of Eastern Parkway. And what general Longstreet, excuse me, what general? General Buell from the Army of the Ohio. Stayed at his house. Every single one of them. Well, and they all slept comfortably well, Why the night. hell did we not go back there tonight? Were you there when they stayed? <laughs> Whoa! That, that's a mic drop on that one. <laughs> Christina, you're a lot faster than your dad, I guarantee it. At Lux Row? We, we, we don't have an amusement park, but we have a, we, we have a, we have a petting zoo with peacocks. <laughs> if anybody's in the, in the realm to take one home, anybody got a farm here? If anybody wants a peacock, Come to the distillery tomorrow. You've got four free ones. Yes, yes we do. <laughs> six of them. Mating season starts next month. Please come grab one. Unfortunately, yes. This time last year we had almost 20. Please come get them. So when I research, we've got a farm, and I, I may take them. But they take a little bit of work, though, right? A little you bit. let them run wild. No, we do. Huh? We let them run wild. All right, I'll take them. Yeah. For real. They do mate, though, and during mating season, they're very aggressive. Squirrels? I don't no. know. Probably not. I would love peacocks at our. We've got a new farm out in uh, Wadi. Do you, do you have dogs also? No. Good. Well, they, our, our peacocks eat dog food, so that's literally what we feed them. No, we're right. Hey, Jack, we want four peacocks for the cabin? No <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Okay, does everybody have the Ezra Brooks Barrel Pick 120 proof from the Big Burger Club? Raise your hand if you don't have it yet. All right, let's do it. All right, you guys, so 
We want to reel it back in for just a second. I know we just tried for our third sample, that, that straight out of the barrel sample. Well, this is the same mash bill, so this is the final product at 120 proof. So this is the pick that the group did back in November at the distillery. So cheers, you guys. I need to sample myself, Steve. Where, where is it? We need one. Um, I, I just need a cup or something. All right, before, uh, hey, listen, everybody, real quick, we're going to pose for a toast, all right? Joanna, look towards Joanna. And everybody toast up to Luxro Distillers. Thank you so much for an incredible evening. Here, here, thank you so much. Here, here. I've heard four languages, Polish, <laughs> Italian, <laughs> Cuban, <laughs> Taylorsville Road. <laughs> yeah. Sandy, you going home? <laughs> You're going to the bathroom, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put, you told me you were leaving early. I thought you were going home. You just put her on the spot like that. I thought you had to get back to Taylorsville. All right. Hey, give, give Sandy a big applause. All right, so this is the barrel pick. Try it out. What do you think? Chris Rogers. Chris, what do you think? You go on a lot of barrel, yeah. What do you think? Danielle? So... For, for those of you guys that, that don't know the age just yet, um, this was barrel was built on um, April 22nd of 2017. So that's literally the sample that I have right here. I didn't even know it. Um, so if anybody wants this one, you guys, let me see. It's the same fill date. No, it's not the same barrel, but it's the same fill date. So that's kind of cool. But... We'll do, and we'll do another giveaway. We've got some, a few things to give out. You guys are going to have to fight over it. I know, right? So, uh, no, seriously, thank you guys for having us. You guys were a fantastic group to hang out with. Uh, sorry for stealing the show from you, Christina, tonight. She didn't even know I was coming. <laughs> so hold on. It ain't over yet. we got a lot of gifts to give away. We We've do, got we some do. drawings. But we have, we've got to have a little interaction. We don't feel the love. Questions? Scott Senta, you've got to have questions. You're a big bourbon guy. Any questions? I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Bill Reynolds, any questions? Karen? Karen, any questions? No, never. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Beverly, questions? I think we did such a great job. They have no questions. Well, uh, if Paul? you guys don't have questions, I've got some questions for you guys. We've got a couple back there. Floral notes? I couldn't hear. Smells floral? Yeah. It, it, it kind of smells like Gavin shirt, kind of florally. Is that a palmetto? Florally shirt, Gavin? Or his shirt now smells like the bourbon. One of the two. We're going to give these away. That's cool. So we're going to give away these three. Or these four tickets in a barrel. Yeah, so um, if there are no more questions for us, we've got some questions for you guys for a few giveaway prizes. We're going to give away um, one of each of these bottles, the sample bottle as well, and this Rebel Barrel Head. Um, so I'm going to start out with an easy one. 
Uh, what year did Luxrow start in Bardstown, Kentucky? He answered first. He said 2012. Incorrect. I heard 2012. Incor on. Incorrect. 18. He yelled it. It's a bottle of your Davis County Double Barrel. Congratulations. All right, yeah. next question. This is going to be for the Rebel Barrel Head. Because I brought it, so I get to pick which one we get. You're doing, away. hold on, we're doing that last. We're going to make it oh, really hard. We're going to make it a hard one? Yeah, no, we're going to do it hard. I love that. Can okay. Do the, do the, excuse me, must be prep win. <laughs> this is going to be for the Rebel Distillers Collection. What did Landon say we're going to finish Blood Oath Pack 8 in? Blood Oath Pack 8 is going to be finished in what? We've said it twice. French what kind no. of apple brandy? She's got it. She got, She's it. got it. We got a winner back here, Jenny. Jenny, come on up and get it. We don't bring this shit to you. Come up and get it. Call the dose barrels. So, hey, Jenny, bourbon Jenny. There you go, big dog. Bur hey, Jenny, Jenny, where did you... Jenny, Jenny, where did you drive from? Terre Haute, Indiana. Terre Haute, Indiana. That's got a couple hundred miles we on her. Well done, Jenny. All right, Landon, you're up next. All right. Um, this, we're going to go back a little bit further. We've been talking a lot about the roots of Lux Row, Don Lux, all that stuff. What year was Lux co-founded? And no cheating on this. 1958. I heard it first. It's about all the, uh, the cash strings, so I don't know if you've already bought one or not, but you've got another one. All right. All right. We'll give, give the, the barrel strength sample. Here Christina. we go. Barrel strength, Christina. All right. AFC MVP in the NFL 1978. Quarterback for the – no, never mind. Sorry. What animals are in our petting zoo at Lux Rock? <laughs> we just. <laughs> you win a All right, here we go. And here's the grand prize. I'm going to do the grand prize. Now, listen, everybody be quiet. And I want my friends at Lux Row to pay attention to the winners, all right? Christina, Landon, watch the crowd. The Hugheses are getting ready to jump out of their chairs. You ready for this one? Jennifer, you ready? She's ready. All right, here we go. Does anybody want this? That, that's a bunch of horse shit. Give me something good. You guys here we go. Louder than that all night. If listen to me, listen closely. This is a. I should have been a high school teacher because you all are terrible. <laughs> I heard it over here, but I swear to God that Callahan said it. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You must raise your hand, and if you scream out an answer, you're disqualified. All right? When you raise your hand high, Christina calls on you, and you give me the answer, and then you shut up if you're wrong, and then we go to the next one. Landon, you've got number two. Chris Smiley, put your hand down. I haven't asked the question. Are we, are we ready? We're ready. What is the last name? of the master distiller of luck. Rimke, I got it. Yeah, big dog. Did, does nobody know it really? All right, so we're gonna do another question. Hold on, hold on. That's, that's a name that you guys need to know. Okay, I've, I've got a fun one. This is for, unfortunately, the people that have been to the distillery. Um, it's not something that we talked about tonight, but this is a fun fact. So Don Lux is, of course, the former owner of Luxco. Does anybody know his wife's name, the creative director of the visitor experience? Barbara, no. Stop it. I said raise your hand, don't scream out names. Brennan. 
No, it's, it's not cinnamon. I didn't say tasty notes, big dog. Sarah, no. All right, this isn't going to work. No, let's give it. Hold on, hold that, on. That was a hold hard on. one. We're going to huddle up. Time out. A minute and 53 left in the game. We're down by three. Hold on. Okay, down, set. Okay, here we go. God, it's no wonder the Callahans win. They're the only ones paying attention. Thank you. If you have a reservation name at your table with your name on it, hold it up. There's one table here. The Callahans. Thank you, Bill Reynolds. Thank you for that. Okay, here we go. So our fine friends here, Landon and Christina, told you earlier what the annual barrel production is. Annual means a year. That's not what I said. Let me finish. Keep your hands in your pocket. They're going through an expansion. What will it be? Right, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That was a shitty ass question. Raise your hand if you know After next year, how many barrels are we going to produce over the course of four years? Hold on, hold on. We have a Mercurio. 200,000. She's got no. it. No. That's, that's correct. 200,000. Get up here, girlfriend. I, I, I threw a little math into there. Congratulations. Lisa Mercurio. How about that? Does she remind you of the Price is Right model? When you came down the stairs and they held it up and did that thing with her hip, right there. There you go, big dog. That's it. We're done. Thank our friends from Luxro. Great job, guys. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us out. Thank you so much. Next year, the Rebel Pick's coming. Thanks again, you guys. And we'll be around while we're cleaning up if you all have any other questions for us. So, again, thanks for your time tonight.